presentation, you will learn about quantitative data analysis. Quantitative analysis refers to the process where the data collected is classified and then processed using a set of statistical methods. It involves mathematical processing and manipulation, which is then interpreted and illustrated with the help of graphical representations. The data chosen for quantitative researches are collected randomly and in large samples. Thus, the analysis allows the researcher to apply the patterns or trends found in the sample to the general population. Quantitative analysis is objective in nature and attempts to understand the occurrence of an event or happening and describe them using statistical methods. It is therefore not concerned with the random or scarce results of a study. However, it is vital to note that researchers must take care not to make sweeping generalizations about the analyzed data. The kind of data collected in a quantitative design are primarily concerned with measurable quantities like length, weight, speed, width, temperature, etc. Since the amount of data collected is expansive, in the process of data analysis, the researcher attempts to simplify the data using statistical techniques like measures of central tendency, standard deviation, and measures of dispersion. This data is then expressed through diagrammatic representations, for example, charts, graphs, etc. Steps. Quantitative data analysis can be simplified when broken down into the following steps. Organizing the collected data. The researcher could have collected data for the research from a number of samples. The first stage of data analysis should therefore be to organize the collected responses from the sources so that they may be explored or described in greater detail. Expressing or depicting the data. Once the data has been organized into a number of similar responses, then the researcher can begin to illustrate the data. Graphical representations may be used for this. In certain cases, the numerical figures collected would have to undergo some form of a statistical procedure so that they may be more easily expressed. These could be communicated through tables, figures, pie charts, histograms, etc. Analyzing or summarizing to reach a conclusion. In this step, the researcher must evaluate the collected data to understand what the kind of responses have been. This will allow them to interlink the responses with the hypothesis or research question. By this step, the data collected is no longer just in its raw form. Hence, the analyzed data should be able to assist the researcher in establishing or proving the hypothesis, thus leading to a conclusion of the research. However, quantitative research is not without its limitations. To ensure greater control over the subjects, such as in cases where experiments are conducted, the research could be conducted in an unnatural environment. Hence, the analyzed data will hold narrow scope and may not be applicable in real-life situations. Quantitative data analysis could be affected by structural bias, a result of missing data, unequal measurements and errors from the researcher. Quantitative data analysis is often deemed superficial. It is challenging to use quantitative data analysis when studying about new concepts or phenomenon. It merely deduces the data in hand with the hypothesis, but doesn't elaborate or explain why. John Best, in his book, Research in Education, pens down some of the things researchers must keep in mind when doing quantitative data analysis. Are tables and figures used properly? Is explanation on the text clear and brief? 
is the examination of relations between data based on logic and proper perception. Is the statistical analysis understood properly? Are all sections of the experimental design provided with results? Are they supported with apt statistical analysis or charts and graphs? Are the results projected directly in a straitjacket manner without explaining the reasons for their occurrence? Are all statistical analyses suitable and presented properly? Types of quantitative analysis. Descriptive analysis. A descriptive analysis is considered as the important first step of conducting a statistical analysis. At this stage, the data is described using its most basic features. The data is expressed through basic analytics, such as through the distribution of data, identifying the outliers, finding the basic associations, etc. Descriptive analysis could be done with the help of multiple techniques, like by finding the mean, range, standard deviation, etc. The three main kinds of descriptive statistics are measures of frequency. Frequency distribution is concerned with organizing the collected data into a systematic form so as to understand and access the frequency of some of the variables being studied. It simply accounts for the number of times a variable occurs through the course of data collection. Measures of central tendency. Also referred to as an average, these indicate a statistical constant which enable us to comprehend in a single effort the significance of the whole. It condenses the mass of data into a single value which then enables us to get a bird's eye view of the entire data. It is useful when comparing the data either between a point of time or over a period of time. Measures of central tendency could be a mathematic average or mean or could be locational averages such as median and mode. Measures of dispersion or variation. Measures of dispersion or variation study the spread or scatteredness of the data. It enables the researcher to know more about the data than merely the central term or average. Hence, it aids in supplementing the measure of central tendency by providing information about how individual items are spread around the mean. There are four measures of dispersion, range, quartile deviation, mean deviation, and standard deviation. Inferential analysis. According to BEST, the purpose of inferential statistics is to draw inferences about a population on the basis of sample estimation. Inferential statistics are statistical procedures that are used to infer and draw conclusions about the population undertaken for study based on the data sample collected from them. Inferential statistics use descriptive statistics as the base from which inferences are drawn. Statistical tests like t-test, parametric test, hypothesis test, etc. are used to identify if there is an observed pattern in the data collected. Researchers use inferential statistics to determine the relation between the outcome and the intervention or to analyze the strength of the relationship being studied. Thank you for watching the presentation.